I'd like to, for a moment, just reflect on where we are at this session of the United States Senate and the choices that have been made. I want to thank Senator Sanders, Senator Schumer, for bringing this with clarity to the floor of the Senate. We support $2,000 as a helping hand to people across the United States. There's a limitation on the amount that individuals receive if they make more than $75,000 or if their family makes more than $150,000. But we are following the template that has been employed both with the CARES Act and with our own COVID Relief Act of just a few days ago. We've been told by the Department of the Treasury that if you want to put money into the hands of Americans that desperately need it, this is the best way to do it, the quickest way to do it. There are better ways, I'm sure, but in time of crisis, we need to respond and respond in a timely way. And so Senator Sanders and Senator Schumer have brought to the floor for consideration, we, we hope, a bill that has already passed the House of Representatives. The sig significance of this is that the House is now in recess and not scheduled to return in this congressional session. So whatever happens over here cannot be a new bill. There's no House to send it to and no time to pass it, but rather has to be an up or down vote on a bill that has passed the House as is. And that's what they've come to the floor now for three straight days asking. Senator Schumer has asked repeatedly to Senator McConnell, the Republican leader, a simple request. Whether you're for the House bill or against the House bill, allow the Senate to be the Senate. Allow us to vote on the bill. For those of us who support it, to vote on it. And it isn't a lock, it isn't a guarantee that we're going to win and prevail with that vote. 48 Democratic senators and you need 60 votes. We need help from the other side. Four or five Republican senators say they support it as well, but we don't know if we have the 12, if all of our members can be here in this era of COVID-19. Sadly, even some of our senators have illnesses in the family which may make it impossible for them to be here. So there's no guarantee we win, but there will be a guarantee that we are recorded and our positions are known to the voters across America. That is a simple request, and yet time and time and time again, the Republican leader, Senator McConnell, has said no. I'm, I'm worried over what's happening to this institution, not just with this instance, but with what we've seen over the past several years. We will conclude this calendar year having voted on the floor of this United States Senate 29 times on amendments, 29 in the course of a year in what is supposedly the world's greatest deliberative body. I guess I shouldn't complain, it's a 30% increase over last year when we voted on 22 amendments in the entire calendar year. The Senate is out of business and out to lunch when it comes to legislating, and that's a fact. And all we're asking for is the chance to legislate a $2,000 helping hand to families across America. I've heard over and over again that we're just trying to feather bed the rich. We're trying to give big checks to rich people. Well, Senator Sanders made a point of that earlier. Less than 1% of the money that we're asking for is gonna to go to the top 5%. When it came time for tax policy and tax breaks, many of the people complaining the loudest about $2,000 were giving away millions of dollars to the richest people in America without any hesitation. Well, today's another day, and today's a different America. Today, we are facing a country that is in the depths of the crisis created by COVID-19. The numbers coming back to us every night on the news are heartbreaking numbers. I, I understand, and most of us do, those wonderful women and men who are in the healthcare business usually are very stoic and calm in reporting the reality of their lives. Not so anymore. More and more doctors and nurses are breaking down on television as they describe the scenes in emergency rooms across this country. They describe the reality of telling families that they cannot be by the bedside of one of their loved ones who's about to die. And they break down in tears and tell us they don't know how much more of this they can take. That is the reality of America. It is not an America of people vastly rich, sitting by the swimming pool, hoping Congress sends them more money. It's an America of those patients and their families 
and the people who are out of work and the businessmen and women who've lost everything who need a hand from this government. If there is one thing about America, I hope it's clear no matter what your political persuasion, we are a caring people. If there is a hurricane that hits Florida, I care about it. If there's a tornado that hits the state of Nebraska, I care about it. And we come together on a bipartisan basis to help those families. Now more than ever, those families need us to do something significant in their lives. How can you see the scenes on television every night of the parade of cars lined up in Texas, in Kentucky, in Illinois, hoping that they can get some food to give to their families? Are those grifters and chiselers who are just trying to get a free meal? I don't think so. Would you sit in your car for an hour or two for food unless you really needed it? I think those people really need it. And many of them are heartbroken that they're in this situation. Some are even embarrassed, and they shouldn't be, that they have been the victims of this economy. So all we're asking Senator McConnell is give us a chance to vote. You can vote no if you wish. Give us a chance to vote for the $2,000 that can make a difference in a person's life. $4,000 for a husband and wife who are struggling to get by. Rent checks, mortgage payments, car payments, utility bills, things that really are basic to family survival. We're trying to help, and I think we should be given that chance. We have tried time and again. We have the support of President Trump in this effort, and I'm glad to have it. I think we have enough support in this chamber to come up with 60 votes. I pray that we will if we're given that chance. And I hope that the Senate Republican leader is not afraid of that outcome. He shouldn't be. He has two of his incumbent Republican senators in a runoff election who have both publicly said they want to vote for this, and yet he stops them. He's the one who's put an end to their opportunity. Why? Shouldn't he give them the opportunity to vote yes? He even refuses in this situation with this looming election to bring this matter to the floor for an honest, up or down, bipartisan vote. I listened to the stories that were told by Senator Sanders and others about the plight of people in this country and how much they count on us and frankly how many of them have given up on us. They just don't believe the Congress of the United States is in touch with the reality of America. If we are in touch with the reality in our home states, in our hometowns, we should do something, something significant to end this new year on the right note. I plead with the Republican leader who has the power, the one, the sole member of Congress of 100 members, he has the power to bring this matter to a vote and to do it immediately, within the hour. We could call the members who've returned to Washington yesterday together, take a vote soon in a matter of minutes, and know once and for all whether we have 60 votes that are necessary to pass this measure. And then we can pass the override of the president's veto of the defense authorization bill, a critical piece of legislation. That would be the right way to end this year. Let us not end it in suspense as to whether or not we're going to come to the aid and assistance of American families who rely on us time and again to be there when America needs a helping hand. Let's do our job. Let's fill this chamber with senators who actually vote on an issue that makes a difference in the lives of Americans. That's what we were elected to do. We have no excuse if we fail. I yield the floor and suggest the absence of a